Hey guys and welcome back to another Mansion Forge tutorial. In today's video we're going to be advancing upon our third person shooter minigame series and today we're going to be counting how many enemies we've killed so we're going to be creating a kill count system. So let me hit play and show you what we're going to make today. Very simple, you can see up in the top left it says kill zero and if I were to kill one of these enemies over here you can see it's gone up to one and if I kill another one it's going to go up to two and it's just going to keep counting all the way up for every single enemy that we kill as you can see here. A nice little simple system we're going to create and set up today so you can maybe play with some friends, get a bit more competitive, see who can kill the most amount of enemies that we have here. So this is what we made today, so without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to open up our character blueprint to create a new variable. So for me that's going to be content, game files, character, UE4 ASP character, which we have here. And in here what I'm going to do is very simply create a new variable here naming this kills or kill count or anything like that and changing it to be an integer so it's a whole number numerical value. So we can compile, save that, we don't need to set the default value because obviously we're going to start off with zero kills so that's what we will have it as. And then we need to come back to this later on so we're just going to minimize it, not close it. And now we need to set up a system for actually counting how many enemies we've killed. So very simply what we can do is we can just add one to that variable every time we kill an enemy. So to do that, we're going to open up our enemy blueprint, which for me is content, game files, enemy, enemy VP. And then we need to find the code for killing and damaging the AI, which I have here. So event any damage, all of this, and off of true if this branch, this is the code for actually killing the enemy. So what I'm going to do is just before this delay and destroy actor, I'm going to move that out and then hold down S and left click to get a sequence like so. Then one is going to go into the delay here, and I'll just move that down here and then zero is going to go into some code for counting the kills. So we're going to cast to our character, which for me is cast to UE4 ASP character, but again for you it could be third, first, UE4 ASP, or whatever you've named it. And the object is obviously going to be get player character, as this is for our player character. So get player character, like so. And all we need to do out of this is as our character, we're going to get the kills integer variable which we've just made, so this gets how many kills we already have. And out of this, we're going to get an increment int, like so, connecting that into the cast. So what it's going to do is it's going to get the current amount of kills we have, so that's 0, 1, 10, 20, whatever it is, add 1 to that, and then set it. So if this is 10, we're getting 10 kills, adding 1 on, so this is now 11 kills. So then when we next kill an enemy, it will be 11, add 1 and set it, 12, and so on and so forth. So we're getting how many kills we have, adding one onto it and setting it straight away like this. So we can compile and save and that is it done. All we need to do very simply to count how many kills we have. We also want to show this on screen so the player knows how many we have. So we can close this enemy VP here, minimize this and then let's create a widget blueprint. So I'm just going to do that in here. In fact I'll do it in my character folder to keep it organized. So we're going to right click on our content browser, go to user interface and create a widget blueprint, naming this kill count widget or whatever you want to call it and we're going to open that up straight away. Now I'm not going to make this too fancy I'm simply just going to get some text place it in the top left make sure the anchor is where it needs to be and then bind in the number of kills in here. But again you can customize this to make it whatever you want so put the text anywhere you want change the size change the font change the color all that good stuff but I'm not going to bother with that too much although I will add an outline just to make it easy to see and read. So that I believe is under font, under the appearance, font, outline settings, I'll just give it an outline of 5. So if we deselect that, you can see we have an outline there. So let's select our text box, go up to where it's got content, text, hit bind and create binding. Now you can see we have get text and the return node here. This return node is going to input something into that text box of what we want, which again for me is obviously going to be the amount of kills we have. So before we do that, we're going to go to the event graph of this widget, delete event tick and delete event preconstruct because we want to get a reference to our character blueprint so we can access this kills widget. Now we can do it so the variable is in here and then we cast to this to set it but I think it's better to have the variable in the character blueprint because that way it's easy to access from other blueprints if we need it. So event construct I'm going to cast to my character which for me is the UE4 ASP character with again the object being get player character. So using this we can now access the kills variable where we need to. But we don't want it in the event graph, we want it in the text binding. So we're going to right click as UE4ASP character, promote it to a variable, naming this character reference. 
and now we have a reference to this cast and to our character so we can drag out the reference and get kills for example and so we can access anything we want inside of the character from this reference. So now if we go back to our text binding here we can drag in that character reference variable we just made, drag out of that and get kills and you can see we can now access the amount of kills the player has inside of this widget blueprint. And then to input it into the return node we can just connect it straight in and it will convert it to a text but that's just going to say the number. The player doesn't really know what that is. They'll obviously be able to figure it out but to make it easier for them to know I'm going to drag out the return value, get a format text like so and inside the format I can write how many kills we actually have. So for example I'm going to write kills colon space open bracket kills close bracket. Now when I hit enter you can see under format we can now input a value for kills. So it's going to write kills and then input a value in there. So let me change the kills name there just to show it to you a bit easier. So I'll rename it kills number like so. So you can see we can now input the amount of kills we have. So it's going to write kills, input our integer, which we can input as our kills integer, which we have here. So that should work perfectly for us. And again, the open and close brackets need to be that one with a little bump on. I'll obviously put it on the screen when I was writing it. So the text is simply going to write kills, colon, space, and the number of kills we have. So we compile, save, close the widget, and go back to our character blueprint, which I said to leave open earlier. In here, we just need to create the widget and add it to the screen so the player can see it. So I'm going to be doing that off of event begin play, where we also have created this ammo widget here. So after this, I'm simply just going to create widget once again, with the class this time being our kill count widget we just made, and the return value again being add to viewport. So we can now compile and save, and this is the code done for us, nice and simple and easy to do. So let's hit play, and you can see in the top left it says kills zero, as I mentioned it would, it says kills and the amount of kills we have. And if I were to then kill this person, this AI enemy here, you can see it's gone up to kills one. And it's got the nice outline as well. And for every enemy we kill, it's going to go up and count up nice and easily like so. So I think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we want to do. We've set it up so it's going to count how many kills we have and should display it on screen for the player to see for me in the top left corner like so. And again, it's just going to count up by one for every single enemy that we kill. So thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful, and if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.